The wife of poisoned former Russian spy Alexander Litvinenko is speaking out for the first time about her husband's death. Marina Litvinenko believes Russian authorities could be behind it. Litvinenko's widow said her husband never had an enemy in his life, but she believed his line of work may have put him in danger. I can't speak about many of these things because for me it's very important it will be found who killed him and why. Litvinenko died in London last month after openly criticizing the Russian government. He was poisoned. Traces of polonium-210 was found in his body. The Kremlin denies any responsibility for his death. The polonium-210 that was discovered in Litvinenko's body became a public safety threat. That's because the radioactive substance left a trail of radiation where Litvinenko traveled. For more on what polonium-210 is, how it spreads, and how it affects people, we're joined by Gordon Edwards. He's the president of the Canadian Coalition for Nuclear Responsibility, and he joins us now from Montreal. So, Mr. Edwards, we keep hearing about traces of polonium-210 showing up in all kinds of different places. How is it that it spreads? Well, you have to first of all realize that we're talking about an extremely toxic material. This material is so toxic that a particle of polonium-210 the size of a grain of, of sugar could kill a thousand people. Um, we're talking about a tremendously potent poison. Now, this particular material also has strange physical properties. It vaporizes readily into the air and it creeps if you put it in a container, once you take the lid off that container, it can literally creep up the walls of the container. It's hard to imagine how this could happen, but it's because it vaporizes and then condenses, and so it appears to be moving. Uh, and in this way, it, it sticks to surfaces, and so that people who just simply touch a, a given surface, which has polonium-210 contaminant, get very small amounts on their fingers, but that's all it takes. That's unbelievable. So given that it, it, it is just trace amounts and just a tiny, as you say, a grain of sugar, how dangerous are some of these places where, the, where traces of polonium-210 have been found? Well, they, uh, of course it depends upon the levels, and we're not getting that information from the authorities. They're not telling us how many becquerels per square centimeter, for example. A becquerel is one disintegration per second. So you'd have to know how many becquerels per, per centimeter there are. The, we already know that polonium-210 is an extremely dangerous substance because it's what kills most cigarette smokers. Uh, there's polonium-210 in cigarette smoke, and that's why secondhand cigarette smoke is dangerous even, because it carries that polonium-210 which sticks to those aerosol particles of smoke and get inhaled into the lungs of even people who are not smoking. How easy is it to come across polonium-210? It does occur in nature. In fact, radon gas is the so-called parent of polonium-210. Everyone has heard of the dangers of radon gas, but what many people don't realize is that when you breathe radon into your lungs, it's actually turning into polonium inside your lungs. So that you get polonium-210 in your lungs, and that's why radon is so dangerous. It's a delivery system for polonium-210. Now, we're talking here about extremely minute, m very minute amounts, which would be considered safe according to the regulatory standards, but nevertheless, it kills a lot of smokers. Now, if, somebody so in the case, if someone were to be yeah. carrying polonium-210 around as a poison and wanted to poison somebody with it, how would that person carry it around? It would have to be in a tightly sealed container, but inside that container, it's perfectly safe because it gives off a type of non-penetrating radiation called alpha radiation. And this alpha radiation cannot even penetrate through a piece of paper. So as long as it's tightly wrapped, you can carry it quite safely. Now the problem is it does generate some heat. You have to be careful about that. Uh, but when you open it, that's when the danger really begins. Because once that thing is open, minute particles which can escape and contaminate surfaces can be dangerous to the people who come in contact with it. I would imagine that in the case of Litvinenko, the minimum amount of polonium-210 that would have been required to kill him in 20 days would have been about half of a microgram. A microgram is one one millionth of a gram. This would be invisible. Chances are he got much more than that. They probably gave him milligrams of polonium. That's barely visible. It's a barely, barely visible speck. But that would be enough to kill not only so him, how would, but many how other would the person well. who, How would the person or the people who allegedly poisoned him, how would they how would they open up the vial and, and make sure that he consumed it without, putting, without um, harming themselves? 
Well, that's, that's a very good question, and it's, it's doubtful that anybody could have carried this off without getting some contamination on their own bodies or on their own clothing. Uh, I don't know how that would have been done. It could have been done in a liquid farm where it was in a sealed uh, container that was injected into uh, the tea or the sushi or whatever it was that uh, Mr. Lif uh, Lit Litvinenko finally ingested. Um, or it could have been in a solid form. It could have been in a particulate form as a powder. I would imagine mm -hmm. that that would have been even more dangerous to handle. All right, uh, Gordon Edwards, good to talk to you today. Thank you very much. Thank you. As we told you earlier, former Chilean dictator Augusto Pinochet has died. He was 91 years old. For more on the story, we go to reporter Jorge Garretin, who is in.